So I think we'll start today. We'll just have a wee bit of background about Eureka Solutions and, and who we are um, before we then get into looking at iPlus as a solution and, uh, as I say, a short, short software demonstration and a QA at the end. So Eureka Solutions, who are we and, and where and how do we uh, fit in um, with iPlus and how do we fit in what's been our experience um, with software solutions? So we've been successfully implementing cloud-based platforms for well over 15 years now. Um, and we've been founded on two core principles, and it was our technical expertise and customer service. And that comes through the whole cycle at Eureka Solutions, whether that be sales, whether that be account management, whether that be implementation, whether that be software support and the ongoing support from your account manager and the support team going forward. So it's very much at all stages of the implementation process right through to the support of the software and the duration that you're working with Eureka Solutions. We provide implementation and development and support services, as well as our own integration application recently, which we'll come on to in a wee second. So we would do the implementation of iPlicit, the scoping, the, uh, the training of the system, making sure you go live um, well with the system, and we'd also do the ongoing support as well. So our support team would be on hand for any queries, any day-to-day -day issues that arise, Touch with there would be not many, but our support team is there for any any queries. And that's actually where I started at Eureka. Um, so I was on the, our support team working with our implementation team before moving across to doing more sales and account management at Eureka Solutions. And that really comes on to the next point where we've grown from, from three staff back in 2004 to well over 70 today. And the majority are actually in technical roles. So, for example, I've worked on our support team. A lot of our, our staff are, are fully technical. And that all comes back to those two core principles that Eureka Solutions work off. That's technical expertise and customer service. And the big heart of that is having everyone in the organisation knowing the product range and knowing the products that we sell. One of those is Basinkly, which Paul, I think, will probably touch on as we go through um, the session today, looking at how iPlicit can integrate to our solutions. And Basinkly is a, um, a cloud-based integration platform, so it may be for charities looking to link to member systems, donation systems. That's something that Basinkly, um, a product that we've developed over time, uh, can certainly help with. And then just coming back finally to those two um, core founding principles, it's always at the heart of what we do, customer service. That is kind of shown by our 9.7 out of 10 customer satisfaction on, on customer share. These are live reviews that we have on our website. So anytime that we shut a support case or help a customer on support, they get the option to, to write a review, good or bad, about our support team. And we're sitting at 9.7 out of 10 at the moment. So um, a very good score for the team and just shows that our, um, our, our commitment to those, and those, those core principles of technical expertise and customer service. So that's just a quick um, overview of Eureka Solutions, who we are. We are a proud partner for iPlicit. As I say, we do the implementation, we can do the support. And as I say, we're delighted to be joined by Paul Sparks, Commercial Director at iPlicit, who I will take you, uh, take you on the journey and, and talk to you more about iPlicit, the solution, and a short software demonstration. So over to you, Paul. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, Great to be here today and working along with our partner, Eureka. Uh, we're looking forward to sharing with you today how iPlicit is a product designed primarily for nonprofit organizations and how it can help nonprofit organizations make their finance process simpler and quicker and more efficient. So to sort of start things off, for some of you, uh, just to, to give you a flavor as what we're gonna do, and just, we've just been through obviously our introductions. Uh, we'll talk about how the principles of how iPlicit can help nonprofit organizations. And then the bit that I love is the chance to get our sleeves rolled up and we'll get to see some product in action and give you a flavor of iPlicit and why it's award winning and why it's proving to be so popular for nonprofit organizations. Uh, then we've got a Q&A session, so please feel free to use the Zoom platform, add questions. Nathan is there monitoring those questions and trying to find the most difficult ones that he can pick out from any that have raised to ask me at the end to see if he can catch me out. So uh, looking forward to that. So feel free to add those through. Um, uh, so, yeah, so without further ado, let's kick things off and talk a bit about iPlicit, where it came from. You know, it's a name that not everybody is familiar with. Um, I'd like to talk about why it all started. Uh, it started because there are tens and thousands of organisations in the United Kingdom and beyond who are either on old on-premise legacy software 
or they are have outgrown their entry level solutions um and we felt that there was a real need for organizations that sort of fit in and in, in around that criteria and how we could help them make that move to the cloud simply and easily so we ended up with sort of three key reasons for 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 implicit being and that is firstly we set out to make finance simpler so we make our so we made our software easy to implement easy to integrate and easy to use we also believe passionately that customers shouldn't feel like they're hostages so quite a strong statement but in the mid market space it's often uh, very long term contracts involved so we decided that we would create uh, a, a premise where people can have much shorter term contracts and effectively be and use the iplicit platform because they love it and it delivers what they want and effectively judge us on our results and the use of the software and this has proved to be really popular in particular in the charity non-profit space again um we also wanted to create the world's most intuitive and affordable yet powerful finance system so it needed to be cost effective in comparison to other systems with the same level of functionality and we wanted to make it accessible for non-profit organizations so we actually started work on the product uh, around about 2016 but actually we didn't launch it because of all the work involved because of its high level of functionality until january 2019 uh, and it's been quite a considerable journey already around here so we have over 19,000 daily users on the iPlicit platform now, uh, servicing over 1,200 organizations. Uh, it reaches into 85 different countries. And the organization that is purely focused on the iPlicit product, the product you're going to see today, has over 90 people now. Uh, again, very much like our partner Eureka, primarily focused around the service support development areas. Um, and making sure that we've got a great set of very, very happy customers who enjoy using our software. I thought it's worth just sort of talking a bit about the positioning of iPlicit and where it typically sits. Um, so uh, as we said right at the beginning, we typically are replacing old on-premise legacy systems. So we are commonly replacing things like Exchequer, Access, Sage 200, those types of products. Uh, but also people have outgrown Sage 50, Zero, QuickBooks. Um, and uh, we often are seen and considered alongside the likes of NetSuite from Oracle and Sage Intact. Um, but iPlicit is very much targeted about it's, it's a faster implementation process, easier to tailor and implement, um, uh, but still has the power to grow. An interesting fact, 53% of iPlicit customers uh, last year migrated from Sage 50. Uh, it's also an award-winning product. Um, we have a five-star Captera rating. Uh, we have recently won the Growing Business Awards in twenty. In uh, it was in November twenty twenty three. Uh, we won our Industry Award, the Accounting Excellence Awards, and the uh, Accounting Excellence uh, Software Award. And the last two times those awards have been run, we're FCA accredited and we're ISO accredited twenty seven thousand one and nine thousand one. So let's get down to the nub of this. Why is iPlicit such a well-suited product for non-profit organizations? Well, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the fact that iPlicit was born in the cloud. It wasn't an old piece of software that was imported or migrated or updated to kind of partially support it or allow it to run with a VPN or through a remote desktop. This product is a browser-based product born in the cloud, designed for the cloud. And that has massive advantages. And you'll be, you'll be amazed that there are very few of these products in the market available. Um, it's designed to give organizations real-time analysis, anytime, any place, any device, tablet, phone, your laptop, or et cetera. It's also designed with integration in mind. Uh, so working alongside partners like Eureka with their Basinkly product, and we also have a public API. We also use other platforms like Zap Zapier. So there's a whole 
host of different options available to enable you to pick and mix and integrate with other systems that you might have in your ecosystem. I already highlighted the fact that we're immensely proud of how our pricing and our subscription model works. There genuinely is no hidden extras. You pay a monthly fee for our software, albeit there'll be an implementation cost originally as you do the migration, but post that point, you pay a monthly fee that includes all the license fees. There's no hardware cost. There's no hosting fees. There's no update cost. It's all included in that monthly fee and automatically you're getting the latest version of the software um, as, you, as you go through. Reporting is at the heart of iPlicit. And when we designed the software, it's actually where we started. How do we make this platform great at delivering real-time, dynamic, um, high-value information for different stakeholders around the organization? So you can get a single version of the truth that's always up to date with iPlicit, and we'll see some of that in action in today's presentation. Um, security, you know, uh, you, we can't pay any better money to give you a more secure platform. The actual iPlicit solution is actually delivered via the Microsoft Azure platform, and we have multiple data centers uh, enabling automatic failover, backup, et cetera. So you can feel rest assured that you've got the very best, resilient, reliable cloud infrastructure available for your finance team. Um, and so sort of really you know, harking back to this no additional cost piece, but as part of that, we have all customers are always on an up-to-date version. Uh, there is any downtime is limited to out of hours working uh, and it is minimal. Our uptime is something like 99.98 or something of that nature across the last you know, 18 months. So um, a very, very strong platform. The other reason why increasing the implicit is proven popular in nonprofits, but across many types of organizations, is that again, as part of the inherent design of implicit, is that we have built in automation. At the heart of implicit is a feature called the Automation Center. The Automation Center allows you to automate common month-end tasks or other tasks that you might need to do automatically without you even having to press a button. Um, so, for example, month end processing, uh, there's a whole bunch of things like automated depreciation journals, like the fact that you can do um, deferred revenue or deferred income, um, prepayment. All of these items can automatically be created. Your accruals can automatically happen based upon the value of purchase orders that you have that have yet to be um, processed through to invoices. Also, all of those sort of features save huge amounts of time and eradicate those manual laborious tasks that you finance teams face so often on a regular basis. Um, the automation, because of the way in which it works, also helps improve accuracy because it is based around key live information, uh, it's not prone to keying errors, et cetera, in exactly the same way. Um, and that type of automation that we're talking about here is typically the functionality that's only been available historically to large corporate organization paying hundreds of thousands of pounds for their systems. Iplicit changes the face of this and enables nonprofit organizations for a very reasonable and affordable price, get access to this type of high level um, productivity enhancing features for their organization. Um, again, just to reinforce, no long-term contracts. You can use it because you love it, not because you have to. Very fast implementation. We typically implement iPlicit anything between 16 to 20 chargeable days uh, and an average sort of time frame from signing of order to go live is usually about three months. We have done systems much quicker than that. Uh, if there's less data to be migrated, for example, or, or there's an emergency and a reason for doing it. And some people choose to take a slightly longer time frame because that fits in with their model and what they want to do. But certainly, you know, we have a, we're immensely proud of the fact that we typically get people up and running in such a fast time frame, And that's part of the appeal of the game of the iPlicit platform. 
So firstly, on the right, you know, I said, you know, we talk about our heritage and about our product being designed for nonprofits. And here's a few examples of organisations um, that you might be familiar with that are using the iPlicit solution on a daily basis. Um, and again, there's some fantastic names there, and we're really proud, and that's growing rapidly, uh, as you've seen by our user numbers there earlier. But just to sort of pick out, I've just got a couple of slides here that talk a bit about some of the reasons why iPlicit's so well suited, and uh, apologies for us, any repetitiveness on here, but I just wanted to pick out probably the four biggest reasons that people tell us that they love iPlicit. So firstly, um, inbuilt to the platform is the concept of funds and SORP. And so that SORP reporting immediately becomes easy. It also supports partial VAT. So the system can automatically calculate recoverable, non-recoverable elements for, for partial VAT. Um, we also have, uh, and, and again, I think this is probably the, the most exciting part about the architecture of iPlicit, is that you can have as many different levels of analysis or dimensions uh, as you wish within the system. So when you look at your general ledger, you can have a general ledger code, but you can have projects, you can have cost centers, departments, uh, activity, funds, all of these dimensions and you can report instantly across those dimensions quickly and easily and have those different dimensions segmented for different stakeholders and allow them to budget by their areas and then to report and see up to date live data for their particular area of responsibility across the nonprofit organization. The other woven into the fabric of the system is that it also is designed for sort of multi-legal entity. So commonly within um, you know, charities, for example, we'll commonly see a trust and then some trading legal entities. So in this again scenario, this enables us to uh, choose to have those multiple legal entities consolidate, do intercompany transactions quickly and easily. Um, Woven in again to the fabric of iPlicit is a workflow engine. This workflow engine means that you can set up approval. So if somebody raises a PO, for example, it can go through multiple stages of approval based upon different criteria. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is, again, proves really key. Um, final couple of things I'll pick out from here. Um, uh, it's also got its own expense system inbuilt, so you can do staff and volunteer expenses. It can do full budget management. You can reforecast as frequently as you wish, uh, and it fully integrates with Microsoft Office, and we'll see some of that in action as well. Uh, in terms of connecting, uh, the product is designed to connect to multiple different platforms. We've already talked a bit about this, but, you know, you know, for example, using the Basinkly um, solution that enables us to link to many, many different CRMs. Uh, we've got Salesforce, HubSpot, Just Giving, Blackboard, Razor's Edge, and different payroll systems and so on. So that gives you a bit of background. Let's now dive in and start to see the product in action and see how this works. So um, without further ado, I'm just going to switch over and uh, just head to my browser. So hopefully you should be seeing here the iPlicit website. So I'm just on iPlicit.com. You can see I'm using Chrome today as my browser, but it worked with Edge, any modern browser or Safari if you're using Apple. Uh, and obviously, as I mentioned, it will work on mobile devices as well. And there is a dedicated mobile app for Android and for Apple iOS. Uh, so um, just going to just log into the system. There's a login button from the iPlicit um, website homepage. I'm just going to uh, log in. It can do multi-factor authentication, single sign-on technology if you're using things like the Zero AD, et cetera. So very, very secure. I'm just going to uh, log in and try not to put my caps lock on, which would help. Um, and I'm into my open screen of iPlicit itself. So I've set up my open screen to be a dashboard. So let's just quickly talk a bit about the navigation. Um, top right, I can see I'm logged in as Paul. This is where I can do things like change my color schemes and set up how I want it to look, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
I can also see top right um, here, I can do things like change my security settings. Uh, other things I can do here, I can choose to look at my help. So this little question mark is my help. I can look at user guides. I don't know, how do I put on an invoice? Uh, there's purchase invoice guide, little videos, breakdowns, information, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all in built to the platform to make it easy. Last I'm in the help, just to sort of highlight, I mentioned that we're pretty, you know, regular and prolific in terms of releases. Uh, usually every sort of six to eight weeks, there's some new functionality coming out called iPlicit. This gives you an idea when you add those pieces of the functionality, there's breakdowns, little videos again, showing you how all of that works. So that's all from my help screen. Other things top right, I can search for anything I like. So I can, search, I don't know if I purchase invoice, do a quick search, uh, it'll go through. Oh, there we go. There's the invoice that I was looking for, this one here. I can just click, I can drill down. It will show me the actual invoice itself. I can see all the information, which legal entity. I can see the supplier, the invoice number, the date, the due date, the financial period it was for. I can see the line of the information, I can see the GL code. I can see the department, the cost center, any other additional analysis levels that I like. I can see that it's been paid. Uh, I could even see how it was paid. So I can see it was paid on this payment run on the 17th and the 2nd in uh, February 22. Uh, and I can even see from the log who added it, who approved it, and everything that go on that journey. But please don't mention anything to our auditors about the fact about the separation of duty here. But this is just my demo data for purposes, but you get the idea. So, um, that's all from there. Final thing on looking at this invoice, if I click on the attachment, I can even see a copy of the invoice itself, which is then stored so I can look back and see it. So that was literally all I did was do a search and I can search for transactions, for records, anything you like literally from within the search item. Okay, how else do I get around and see information then? So you'll notice that I have got a whole string of different menus. And if I click on them, then there's a sub menu in the line below. So the first thing I want to mention is I have got every single possible options available here. So there looks like I've got lots of features, but the way in which the iPlicit security works is that you have different roles and different people belong to those roles. And depending upon that, um, you can then, uh, the, 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 the screens are tailored and it removes any extra features that you don't need. So for example, I could go here to purchasers, I could go to suppliers, there's a list of suppliers. Uh, I could equally, however, use this quick launch bar. And if I just typed in suppliers here, it will go to the same thing. Or if I wanted to look at my purchase orders, I could just type in orders. So as you get more familiar, it's very really quick. You can save any of these items to be favorites because you use them all the time. Here are my favorites. And again, I've got suppliers as an item and I can go through. I've even got a few dashboards. So I can see here, bring up some dashboards. That I want to perhaps I want to look at my age creditors as a dashboard. They're just favorites that I can access and, and see quickly and easily. So that's how easy it is to get around. Uh, just to go back here a moment, let's go to suppliers. I could choose to have a look at a few different suppliers. So if I just click on the ones I want to see, press enter, it will automatically open up and organize them under the heading on this left hand side here. Now, a common question that I get is, oh, that's really quick and easy. It's you know very familiar. It looks a bit like an Outlook type scenario. Um, does that mean you don't have multiple tabs open? And the answer is yes. So that's the that's the new sort of design for modern systems. I'm sure you've all been familiar with a scenario that you've got so many things open in your browser that they've got so narrow, you have no idea what you've got to open. So this is to alleviate that. You know that within this, this tab, everything to do with iPlicit is accessible and I can see it and I can swap between what I'm doing literally by moving between them. Okay, so um, let's just quickly go to my supplier list. Um, so the way in which the screens work, the, you have these different lists of transactions or records. In this case, it's a list of suppliers. You can click and sort. You can decide which columns you want to see. You can export information to Excel if you've got that um, facility um, security setting. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you, I can even build my own little filter. So I'm going to build a new filter. 
And let's just very quickly build a new filter. And what I'm going to do is I want to look at all the freelancers. So I'm going to say, right, anybody who works with us who's a freelancer. So I've got a category against my supplier records for freelancers. I'm going to apply that. And now I've got a new option on my menu at the top. And if I click here, you'll notice it shows me just this everybody who's a freelancer. And you can see the group is freelancers here. And I can then drill down, look at their record and learn more. Just to sort of quickly show your supplier record, give you a flavor, multiple contacts, different emails for purchase orders, for remittance advices. You can configure that accordingly. It does things like links to Google Maps. Uh, also here, I can just turn around and I can see like, different details. I can see what's their default currency if you're using currency, what's their payment terms, what's the default coding for, for transactions, what's their bank account details. Again, a little point to mention, our workflow can be configured that it stops one person changing the bank details and requiring multiple people to approve that to prevent fraud. Uh, I can go to the documents tab. This will show me all the transactions for this supplier. And I can, this is currently the outstanding ones, but I can just choose to look at all out transactions. But if I want to know more, I can literally click, look at a transaction, drill down. I can see this one's in dispute. I can see the log. Apparently it was a wrong value on this invoice. And so you can see all of those, that information quickly and easily when you're drilling down. Okay, so. That sort of gives us a bit of a flavor of sort of navigating around quickly. Uh, let's just uh, close everything down here. So close all. I'm going to go to the GL now. I'm going to go to my breakdown here. I'm just going to show you the principle of how it all works. So I can quickly say, oh, let's just do some comparisons of a few years side by side, shall we? Um, just put, let's make this up. If I just refresh that. I've now got a few years side by side. If I want to know more, I can just drill down. It will show me the period. And if I want to know more again, I can drill down. It will show me the transactions. If I want to know more, I can go all the way to any underlying transaction itself. Um, so just to sort of show you, um, sorry, go back there a second. Just to sort of show you a slightly different example now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, just show you a different version of this with some different configuration. So in this example, if I go to my income and expenditure, I can see I've got, you know, probably something quite familiar, income expenditure, uh, I can see my different categories and I can see it by month. But what I can also do here is that I can see it by the activity. So we're a charity in this demonstration example. I would do distribution of food parcels, mini grants. And then within there, I can even see which country we did the distribution of food parcels. And if I want to know, you know, or whatever it might be, and if you want to know more within there, I can see the different projects where that spend was allocated uh, or that, 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 that chance will sort of work. And if you want to know more, you can just click drill down and see all the underlying transactions again. So really, really powerful way to be able to segment your data and see things quickly and easily. You can always drill down to the underlying transactions themselves. Um, what I'm also able to do here uh, is I can also budget in that same way. So if I go to my budget area, I'm going to go into my budget. Uh, I've got a particular area in my corporate area. So you basically, when you're setting up your budget, you can budget at any level, you can decide or you want to budget by cost center, by project, by activity, whatever it might be, you design that. And then you can reforecast as frequently, you do like a base budget, then reforecast throughout the year as frequently as you wish. So let's just quickly just pick one up here that we're working on. And so I can see here, I've got my actuals, I've got my variance to this. I can even choose to export this to Excel I can then work on a revised forecast and then import it back as that new revised forecast for the next period. So it makes it really quick. And you can enable your different stakeholders around the organization to be able to see this. And all of this can roll up to one overarching organizational budget. Um, so, um, so yeah, that gives you a bit of an idea in terms of budgets as well. Um, 
Let's talk a bit about fund reporting, shall we, and non-profit uh, partial VAT. So let's just quickly kick off with the VAT. So what I can do here is that when you're setting up your system, you are able to set up that you are using partial VAT. So here I can say I'm going to use partial VAT. And you can then decide how you deal with the non-recoverable element. Do you want to retain the original net cost and the input tax and add a new separate line for the for the unrecoverable element? Do you want to retain the original and, and change it and, and effectively add it to the input tax line? Or do you want to just add it to the net cost? So you can choose how it works, the different features and options around this. You can even then start to set up your partial rates. So you can say, well, actually, I want to have this partial rate that's now going to be applicable from Q1 or from Q2, rather. Um, and then I can say, you know, what's the date? What's the recoverable percentage that I can actually recover on this? And I can then say for which GL codes, for which cost centers, which projects, et cetera. So you can set this up and then automatically the system will do the calculation on the lines of the transactions to do that non-recoverable element for you automatically. In a similar way, in terms of specialist functionality, what I'm going to show you is that I can set up different funds in iPlicit. So here I've got these funds, purple, yellow, you know, and so on. You've got brown trust, green trust, etc. Uh, and they all sit within different fund headings. So what you have is what's called fund types. Yeah, so typically it'd be your restricted, non-restricted, and so on and so forth, and for grant funding, etc. Then what that enables me to do is that I can just simply look at my TB, I can look at that and create my fund report by the different headings, and I can then see the open balances, what's brought forward, I can then see any movements in those particular periods, um, and I can see everything that relates to it. So it's really, really quick and easy to be able to see that information and produce those sorts of sort reports, etc., uh, within the iPlicit system. Okay, which leads me on nicely to talk a bit more about reporting. So I'm gonna to go to my analytics menu. Literally any piece of data within the iPlicit system is available for you to use on and use within reports. We on screen inquiries, which we'll come to in a second, which is where everything starts, and dashboards, and even our live link to the office suite, including Excel and Power BI. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just uh, use a bit of an example. So, I've got, as you can see, over 400 default inquiries. The, the ones that are ticked as author mean these are standard ones that are supplied by iPlicit and we're adding to the library all the time. And then you can copy and tweak them if you want to have something similar, but with a small difference. I'm just going to use an example here. I want to do an age creditors, which is an author based inquiry. And immediately I can see on the screen that author based inquiry at this particular point. You can change the filter. I mean, a classic that I get asked all the time is, oh, could you show me what it was as of the 18th of January 2021? So I can actually go in here and I can update this and it will update and give me a retrospective view of what it was at that particular point. Auditors love that. They can You can go through. If you want to know more about any of this information, you can literally click, you can drill down. It will show the transactions. If you want to know more again, drill down and you can see information and I can see this purchase invoices, pending payments, and et cetera, et cetera. So again, also just to point out this Excel button. So if I looked at this screen and thought, oh, I'd quite like that, just directly add into Excel, please. I can do that. I can click. I can just literally download it, open up Excel, and there it is, straight into the system. Very, very easy. Um, so that's an inquiry. Um, an inquiry can be shared. You can decide which users can use it and see it and you can put it on their menus. As you'll see in a minute, you can even run these inquiries within the iPlicit um, Excel system as well. Um, so um, what I'm gonna do now is show you that an inquiry is available anywhere. So if I went, for example, to the purchase menu and went age creditors, that is that same inquiry being available. But you can also see I've made variants of it. So I can see it by legal entity or by my supplier groupings or by the classifications or by the control accounts. 
going back to my analytics, I can also build reports. So if you want sort of less intuitive, sort of without the drill down, sort of more sort of traditional two-dimensional PDF style reports, I can do exactly the same. So here is like a PDF age credit is to use that same theme as an example, like so. Again, I could even export that as well. And we can also create dashboards. Now, I guess it will also link to Power BI, but we have our own dashboarding tool that people sometimes like to keep it all within the same system. Um, so here, for example, I don't want to use that same theme again, and age creditors. I can see this information, I can design it, I can edit it, I can copy it, I can do searches, I can click and drill down and it will update the rest of the data reliant, you know, based upon what I've drilled down on as well, all within this core. And again, you can say which users can see which dashboards and have access to those as well. Um, so the final part of reporting I'm gonna share with you is I'm just gonna very quickly go back into Excel. And if you're using Office 365, what I'm able to do is if I just start a new workbook here. First thing is that if you go to the add-ins menu, you can search the Microsoft Store. And if you were to search for iPlicit, you can download a free of charge iPlicit add-in directly from Microsoft, which will then put on your Excel home menu a new iPlicit button. So I can click onto here. I can click to log in because obviously it needs to make sure that we want security. And any of those uh, inquiries that I've got the security access to see, I can now see within Excel. So I don't know, I'm just going to use one here, like I've got an age debtors. Uh, I can still choose the filters, legal entities, the date. So, you know, I could say aging by date and I could say, you know, as I did a bit earlier, I could change that, but I'll leave it as standard here. I'm just going to create a table within this sheet. There you go. There's my live data directly through from iPlicit in here. And I can save this workbook and then simply go in each time. And if I refresh, it will bring through the latest information. Um, that's not all. Uh, we also have built uh, a feature that proves massively popular with non-profit organizations for producing management and information. So you probably have already got a nice report pack that you already present to the board of trustees and everybody loves it and everybody's happy with it. And you think, oh, I don't really want to have to go and change that. So imagine that you are, I suspect in many cases, you're using Excel to create that pack. So what I can actually do is if I press the function button in Excel, I can interrogate iPlicit by choosing from the iPlicit range of functions, and I can start to bring through live information. So I might say, bring through a value for this particular legal entity, because there could be a trust and a trading, as we described earlier. Which particular uh, period would you like this information for? which GL code, which fund, whatever it might be you want to bring through, you can set the criteria. And then literally, if I copy that across, that's live information directly from my system. So I can save this workbook, and then each month I can literally, here's one I prepared a little earlier in true Blue Peter tradition, for those of you who are old enough to remember. Um, so here I can see I've got a and, you know, management report pack in the format that I want. I can simply change the period. The data is going to update. I can look back at a previous year and see that information. I can see cash at bank, income expenditure, whatever it is that you want to see. Um, you can literally just see live. So, um, As I said, we would give a bit of a glimpse as to how iPlicit can make nonprofit finance simpler. Hopefully, uh, I've given you a glimpse of just, you know, a little bit of the tip of the iceberg about how easy it is to use the power of the cloud accounting and how easy it is to get around, how we can do more with the system quickly, how easy reporting is, how we can look at budgets, deal with some of those painful challenges like partial VAT and SORP. Um, Nathan, how have you got on with those you know, tough questions for me to answer? Uh, yeah, so we have had a few questions from in, so uh, thanks everyone for those. 
Uh, I'll just fire them off to you now, Paul. The first one is, can you have a shared VAT group? Yes. So um, I place it allows you to across, the, as I mentioned, you can have multiple legal entities. So what that enables you to do is you can actually share a VAT group across those different areas if you wish as well. So yes, you can have a shared VAT group. Okay. Um, the next one is, how does the volunteer expenses work with regards to license costs? Yeah, that's a that's a common question we get. Yeah, um, I should have probably mentioned that. Um, so what you're able to do is that you can have what's called a transaction pack. So you can effectively allow your volunteers to have the mobile app on their phone for Android or iOS. Uh, but they can also log in as well on, on via browser, but commonly it tends to be via using the, the mobile app. And they simply, you buy a pack of transactions. So let's say you've got 50 volunteers, you don't have to buy a license for each one. You can buy a pack that covers all of your own employees, staff expenses, but also the volunteers as well. Another question here, can our accountants easily get access uh, for audits? Yeah, so one of the advantages of iPlicit is that there is free access for audit purposes. So your accountants can have a login free of charge during audit time to get access, get access to reports. And there's even uh, a growing number of dedicated audit reports to help them do that task and make it easier for them. Can we migrate data from our Sage 50 system, including history? Yeah, uh, again, that's often a challenge for organisations. We have dedicated migration tools, but probably one of the features that's unique to iPlicit is that there is a feature um, uh, called archive data. Now, it is a chargeable feature because of what's involved with the work to migrate that data and to host the extra data. But effectively, cut a long story short, it enables you to migrate all of your old data from your Sage 50 system or Zero or Exchequer or Access or Sage 200 and store that in a special archive history area. So even though you're in iPlicit, you can find those old purchase invoices from your old system or look at information from, from the previous solution. Thanks. Uh, one more here. Uh, last one is, I think you actually went on to talk, touch on this. Oh, uh, do you have any specific integrations with fundraising systems like Razor's Edge, Blackboard, or Dynafy? Yeah, so um, both Basinkly, but also the Zapier platform has got connectors to those solutions. Um, I think it's fair to say that you always have to drill into the detail a little bit to um, to make sure you understand what sort of integration you want to do. But yes, it's it's something that's available and, and uh, you can find out more if you speak to the team at Eureka, they can talk to you in a bit more detail. Brilliant, thanks. Uh, that's us at the minute, unless anyone has any last minute questions you want to fire in? No, I think I just, not to cut across Tom here, but I think I'd really encourage anybody who'd like to learn more. We'd love to spend some more time with you and explore if I place it could be something that's useful for your organization. Um, we're not right for everybody, but we we seem to have a, a very, very strong reputation and growing uh, user base in the nonprofit area, as, as demonstrated earlier, um, as I was discussing. Yeah, and as uh, Paul said, any kind of further questions? I know it's sometimes hard on a webinar when you've just absorbed a lot of information to come up with questions right on the spot. So if there are any questions, my, my contact team too. Details are certainly there on the screen at the moment. We would be delighted to arrange any further demonstrations of the software between myself, Paul, and our respective teams. And probably the last thing to do um, is to say a, a massive thank you, firstly, to Paul for coming on and taking the time to, to talk more about Eclisit. Really, we can see the, the experience that he's got in terms of working with not for profit organisations. And I hope it's given a, a good overview of Eclisit. So, thank you, everyone, for joining this morning. Thank you. Mm -hmm.